One of the advantages of using macOS is its built-in backup solution called Time Machine, which is not only a free application, but is also super easy to set up and use. However, while Apple recommend that you use Time Machine with an external USB hard drive, it is possible to have Time Machine make backups to a network share. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can configure your Apple Macintosh computer so that it will make a backup to your Synology B station. In order to use your B station for Time Machine backups, you will need to have enabled local access, something that we've already done in a previous video. As you can see here, local access simply requires that you create a local user account and enable SMB service, which will then by default automatically configure your B station to act as an Apple Time Machine backup point. Let's jump over to macOS and open system settings. If we now search for Time and then click on the setting Time Machine, we will be presented with a panel that will allow us to add a backup disk to our computer. First, we need to select Add Backup Disk. We are then prompted to enter the administrator's credentials for our computer as we will be modifying settings. After clicking on Modify Settings, we should see listed the Time Machine Backup Point that is being broadcast over our home network by our B station. Let's click on Setup Disk. After confirming that we wish to attempt to connect to the Time Machine network share on our B station, we are prompted for a registered username and password, which will need to be the user credentials to the local access account we already created on our B station. When we click Connect, we are shown a panel that we can use to adjust the settings for our backup. It's a good idea to encrypt the backups your computer will make, as those backups will be stored on a network share. However, don't forget to note down the encryption password, as you will not be able to do a full system restore without it. Next, because Time Machine will continue to make backups until your B station is full, it's a good idea to limit how much storage space your backups can use. If we click on Custom, we can use the slider to set how big our backups can be. As a general rule for backups, it's argued that the backup space should be double the size of your computer's hard drive. So because our Mac has 512 gigabytes of storage, the space needed for our backups should be roughly one terabyte. However, as Time Machine will make something called an incremental backup, and it will also compress its backup files, there's no real need to give our backup this much space, especially if cloud storage on your B station is more important than making a full computer backup. By selecting Done, our computer will prepare to make its first backup. It's worth noting that the first backup will always take the longest. However, because Time Machine will make incremental backups, subsequent backups will be a lot faster. If we take a look at the menu bar, you can see that we have a new icon. The Time Machine icon not only tells us when it's making a backup, but if we click on it, we can manually start or stop a backup, use it to restore a file or folder, or open our Time Machine settings. How long Time Machine takes to make its first backup will depend on the amount of data to be backed up and the speed of the network connection that you're using. So while we're using a fast Wi-Fi 6 connection, and at the moment this computer is storing very little data, the whole backup process took roughly two hours. The nice thing about Time Machine is that it has very little impact on the performance of your computer. So if you want to, you can continue to work, but we're going to leave it to do its thing and come back in a couple of hours. Once the first backup has been made, we are provided with a notification and in the Time Machine panel, we're presented with some information about our new backup. This is handy, as we can see how much space is left for backups on our B station, along with when the last backup was made and when the next backup will start. Let's take a look at how the backup and restore process works. As a demonstration, we're going to create an empty folder, manually make a Time Machine backup, delete the folder, and then try and restore it. With our example folder now created, if we click on the Time Machine icon in the menu bar and choose the option Backup Now, 
Time Machine will add our example folder to its backup. Time Machine will also backup any files and folders that have changed since the last backup, so we will need to be patient. Let's now delete our example folder. In order to recover the deleted folder from our backup, if we once again click on the Time Machine icon, but this time choose Browse Time Machine Backup, Time Machine will now open a series of finder panels that represent the snapshots for any backups that have been made. We can now move between panels in order to jump to different backups. Then by using the sidebar in the finder panel, we can browse the contents of our computer in order to try and find the files or folders that we wish to restore. As we only recently deleted our example folder, if we go back to the previous snapshot, we will find a copy of the folder stored in Time Machine. If we highlight the folder and click Restore, Time Machine restores our folder to the same location it was last seen. As a word of warning, as Time Machine is an incremental backup, you should not treat it as a way to archive files that are important to you. This is because an incremental backup will, over time, start to delete old files from its backup in order to save storage space. So if you do have photos and videos that you want to archive, it's better to use the BStation for Desktop app. Then in order to avoid duplication on your BStation, you should stop Time Machine from backing up your computer's photo and video folders. To do this, if we open Time Machine Settings, and then when the Time Machine panel opens, click Options, we will be presented with an area that allows us to exclude drives and folders from our backup. If we now click the Add button and then enter our computer's administrator's credentials in order to make system setting changes, we can then use the Finder panel to browse to the Pictures folder on our computer. By highlighting the Pictures folder, and clicking Exclude, we will instruct Time Machine not to backup our photos. If you have video files, you should also exclude them from your Time Machine backup by repeating the same process. However, you must remember to check that the BStation for Desktop app is making a backup of your photos and video libraries. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at how you use Apple Time Machine with your Synology BStation. We did this by first confirming that we had enabled local access on our BStation, as this will automatically have created a network share called Time Machine. Next, we jumped over to a computer running macOS and configured the Time Machine application to use the Time Machine folder on our BStation. Finally, we tested that we could restore a file or folder before warning you not to treat Time Machine as a way to archive files and folders.